Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. The heat of summer is giving way to the cool of autumn, which around here means apples. For a half a century, the University of Vermont has been selling apples at its farm tucked away off Route 7 in South Burlington. This year, the farm is broadening its sales to include maple syrup and fresh picked vegetables, all the while keeping customers safe during the pandemic. Here's Terry Bradshaw, the director of UVM's Horticulture Research and Education Center. This is our fall farm stand. We used to call it UVM apple sales for about 50 years. And then in 2014, when we started Catamount Farm and branched out into expanded vegetable production, uh, we've, we've changed it to the farm stand or the Catamount educational farm stand. Uh, still apple heavy, it's fall coming in. Um, so the bulk of what will be available will be apples. But we'll also have all the vegetables that we grow, everything from uh, at the very beginning of, of this season, which will be the end of our summer season. We'll have a little bit of our sweet corn, uh, but we'll have you know plenty of tomatoes, peppers, onions, uh, you know, potatoes, you name it, we'll have it. We're also gonna be selling, as we have before, I think maybe because we've got more space, we'll be able to highlight a little bit more uh, syrup from uh, Proctor Maple Center. What kind of apple varieties are available, Terry? So we've got about 50 varieties on the farm. We're sort of in a transition. I actually, uh, back in March, I was about to cut down an acre or so of orchard to make room for, for a future orchard. And it was just about the time when, when the, the COVID thing was, was starting to happen. And I thought maybe this wasn't the year to be cutting food down. We've organized a, a, a pretty good effort with Vermont Food Bank to glean a large chunk of that. Um, I didn't leave that thinking that that extra acre of fruit was going to, you know, put this farm over the top and, you know, send us into the into, uh, you know, fabulous riches. The main thing was keeping food out there. Uh, and, and I was expecting we probably would be donating a lot of it. So I think a large part of that acre uh, will be going uh, to, you know, to various, both either the, the uh, Vermont, the UVM campus food shelf uh, or the, the Vermont Food Bank. What sort of health and safety protocols are you putting in place? We're following the standards protocols that were set forth uh, by the Agency of Agriculture, the guidelines for farmers markets. Um, we're basically a one vendor farmers market. One way traffic flow, uh, we will be having some pre-bagged fruit um, so that people who don't want to go through and pick their own fruit out of the bins are able to, to just pick up a bag and go. Um, we'll have masks required for everybody on site the whole time we're here. The money for the farm stand has always gone to the operations of Catamount Farm. So uh, we pay for some of our staffing, a portion of our staffing, um, but really most of it goes to pay to buy irrigation line and fertilizer and fix the tractors and just keep the farm going. It'll be interesting to see what the farm stand looks like this year. I, you know, reports are pretty good that farm stands are strong. I think we're gonna have a better farm stand than ever. So we've got more to offer people. We don't tend to do a lot of advertising. We're here, we produce a lot of, of food and I want it to go to the community, but we have people who've been coming here for 50 years. Um, so I'd love to keep seeing those folks. Um, I'd like to keep them you know, coming and enjoying what they, what they get in, in a new setting. Um, but we've also are, are making a more concerted effort to market to the student population. Um, we're only four miles away. We're not 40, we're not 400, we're, we're pretty close. Uh, so I would love to get more students down here uh, and community members. Um, you know, you don't have to be a uh, you know UVM faculty or staff to come in the farm stand. In fact, most aren't. Uh, neighbors, friends, just people who are interested in seeing what we do here. Good afternoon. You too. Yeah, this is a really cool place. It, there's a reason I've stuck around for 25 years here, uh, and so. Uh, one thing I'd like to do while we're here, because we have a lot more space in the stand, is maybe put up some displays and highlight some of the other work that we do so people can, can learn about, you know, what the Horticulture Center is about. The farm stand at the UVM Catamount Education Farm is open Fridays from 10 to 4 through early November. The farm is located at 65 Green Mountain Drive in South Burlington. For more information, look for them on Facebook at UVM Catamount Farm. The Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium has been informing and delighting visitors for over 130 years. Its collections range from the natural world to curiosities and history.
Across the Fence visited the museum a few years ago to learn about this one-of-a-kind Vermont institution. Located in the heart of downtown St. Johnsbury is the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium. Founded in 1889 to display the eclectic collection of local industrialist Franklin Fairbanks, the museum's focus is natural history. Franklin Fairbanks himself was a collector, and he was an amateur naturalist. He loved um, exploring and understanding nature, so he collected everything from rocks and minerals to um, bird specimens to eggs. Fairbanks was the nephew of one of the inventors of the Fairbanks scale, which was produced in St. Johnsbury. He inherited a fortune, as well as an interest in philanthropy. Establishing the museum was one way to share his love of learning and nature. He also did things like he kept meticulous uh, weather records. He recorded temperatures and um, wind speed and made observations about things like when strawberries were um, uh, growing in his field. Um, so he was, he was a great observer. Built in the Victorian style that was popular in the late 1800s, the building is listed on the National Historic Register. The collection inside also reflects the Victorian era in which most of it was gathered. The core collections are full habitat dioramas of animals in the wild, so you can see them up close. The taxidermist, William Balsh, did an absolutely brilliant job um, placing those animals in family situations so you might see how, what they eat, how they communicate, how they take care of each other, what their nests look like. For example, in one of his earliest dioramas, like, um, flamingos, uh, there's an egg and then juvenile and then a, an adult and a, um, an aging flamingo all in the same grouping and it's really a chance to see them all together. The intention was to widen the horizons for museum visitors by giving them a chance to see these wonders from far away. Along with the objects and artifacts on display, the museum also houses cultural items from around the world. The items that were brought here were picked up by the Fairbanks family or by representatives of the scale company when they traveled around the world. Um, there's an alcove dedicated to Egypt. There's one uh, with items from different parts of Europe. There are um, items from um, islands in the Pacific. And they're, they're not complete representations of any one part of the world, but they're pieces that were picked up by, by uh, very uh, specific travel, and um, they represent what was interesting at the time. Nearby is a series of artworks whose medium is one of the most unusual you'll find anywhere, representing the Victorian fascination with animals, shapes, and collecting. These images require viewers to take a closer look. We have these lovely mosaics that were um, put together by a man named John Hampson. And then I ask people to get up close and sort of take a look and, and see if they can tell me what they're made of. And usually after about 10 seconds, um, you'll get a response. And that response is because these mosaics are actually made by um, pinning thousands and thousands of beetles and moths on a surface in patterns and designs that were pleasing to the artist who made them. That's right. This is bug art, and the Fairbanks owns the entire collection. Along with the emphasis on the natural world around us, the museum encourages visitors to look up. The Fairbanks has a team of meteorologists on site and is home to the only planetarium in the state. There are things that happen in the sky that, well, I guess maybe it just surprises people if they haven't necessarily noticed it before. Mark Breen is one of the meteorologists at the Fairbanks. Oh, he's cold. He also serves as a tour guide to the cosmos for the planetarium's visitors. It's such a genuine experience. I mean, you know, you describing about this particular constellation that you'll see this evening at 7 o'clock, or this is, you know, certain planets are out tonight, or uh, the moon's going to be moving through a certain, you know, constellation or next to a planet. Breen says that keeping track of Vermont's complicated weather is a unique challenge. Sometimes people ask me, is, is there really such a thing as Vermont weather? You know, is it, is it different than, you know, New Hampshire weather or something like that? And 
Uh, really the key thing about our weather and what I find I think keeps it fascinating for me, I mean, I've been doing this for 35 years, is that our mountains and valleys and, and how they're arranged and how weather systems come up along the coastline or they come out of Canada or off the Great Lakes, all of those different things kind of create unique weather really just from one spot to the other. It, it, you, I wouldn't even say from one town to the other because within the same town, um, there'll be a situation where it's sunny in one place and it's snowing like crazy in another and or in the summer, you'll be a thunderstorm and it only hits one spot and not another. The Fairbanks has educational programs for students of all ages, as well as their own nature-based preschool. One of the um, best kept secrets of this museum is that it is an active teaching museum. So we have partnerships with the schools in this area and we have a really phenomenal team of educators that go and um, they work with teachers and students throughout the year. Students in kindergarten through eighth grade get delivering science classes. It's a chance for visitors to explore the natural world, from the smallest bugs to the largest planets. Whenever I come here, I find something new, and I've been here many years now. <laughs> but there's still things that I hadn't seen before and things to discover. Bringing the wonders of the world to Vermont's Northeast Kingdom, the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium invites guests to begin their journey of discovery right here in St. Johnsbury. I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. The Fairbanks Museum is open Wednesday through Sunday from 10 to 5. Due to the pandemic, not all of the exhibits are open. Check the website for details. One show that is running is Inside Out, Hidden Art in Natural History Collections, thanks to a collaboration between the Fairbanks and Northeastern Vermont Regional Hospital. Visitors are able to see the artistry of Mother Nature hiding just below the surface of some of the museum's favorite furry friends. And that's our show for today. Thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.